Hi, and welcome to our next lecture part on um, nested resampling and its motivation. Okay, so selecting the best model or selecting the best configuration from a set of potential candidate models, so different mo different learners, different uh, hyperparameter configurations. Uh, we've, uh, this is what we've mainly looked at uh, until now. Is an important part of um, yeah, machine learning model selection. Um, the problem is we cannot evaluate our finally selected model on the same resampling splits that we have already used to perform model selection um, to, for example, tune its hyperparameters. So if we repeatedly evaluate our learner on the same test set or on the same cross validation splits, information about this test set can actually leak into our evaluation. Um, this is a little bit uh, counterintuitive. So what this actually means is if you um, perform, for example, cross validation on a data set once um, for a specific learner or for a specific configuration, this uh, the resulting generalization performance estimate is going to be good and unbiased. I mean, this is what we have taught you during um, our sections on um, performance estimation and um, regular cross-validation. So what we are now um, beginning, to beginning to discover is if we do this multiple repeated times yeah, and then we optimize over this process and select the optimal model, which is exactly what happens during uh, regular tuning algorithms, what we cannot re also return as an unbiased result is the estimated performance of this, um, of this selected uh, model class or selected configuration. Um, and as this might be a little bit counterintuitive, um, if you see this for the first time, um, I've actually simulated this in R and constructed um, a um, yeah, practical example that demonstrates this problem. So assume a certain binary classification problem and assume that um, class sizes are roughly equal in R maybe also exactly equal in this problem. And we don't really have to care about um, the specific uh, structure of this classification problem and the specific information and relation between features and the outcome, because I will assume a pretty nonsensical feature independent classification algorithm. So a classification algorithm that just randomly spits out class labels with equal probability. And we'll also assume that this uh, feature in that uh, independent classifier has a completely nonsensical, um, uneffective hyperparameter lambda, which just does nothing. So during training of the algorithm, I will completely ignore any setting um, of the lambda hyperparameter. And I will now um, study what happens if I cross and if I tune this um, algorithm on this um, arbitrary binary classification problem. So first of all, um, any reliable performance estimation of, or stated otherwise, um, if I take any model, any feature independent model um, resulting from this nonsensical algorithm, this will always have a generalization error of 50% because classes are of equal size. The algorithm ignores any type of um, information that might have been in the data and just randomly spits out uh, class labels with a coin flip. So the generalization error must be 50%. And if we cross validate our algorithm um, with any type of uh, fixed lambda configuration, um, we will also uh, pretty directly see that if our data set is not, I don't know, super small, um, the estimated generalization error will also be close to 50%. Right? It will not be exactly 50% numerically, but it will be pretty close to 50% because otherwise um, cross-validation wouldn't work at all. Yeah? 
But now what happens if we tune this algorithm? If we tune this algorithm with 100 different uh, lambda values, maybe through random search, and we repeat this experiment uh, 50 times and then average results. So this is what happens then. So what I've plotted here is um, on the X axis, um, the number of iterations of our random search algorithm, happily trying out different uh, lambda configurations through cross validation on our um, on, on our classification task, and then always tabulating um, the best cross validated performance score that it has seen until then. And here are the different three different curves just represent data sets with different sizes. And what you can see here is that for the first cross validation, they all start around 50%, which is well, close to the correct value and which is what should happen. But what you can also see is that as time passes and random search goes on and um, optimizes, uh, quote unquote optimizes, this nonsensical algorithm more and more and more, the estimated performance of the optimal configuration, quote unquote optimal configuration, seen until here, um, gets smaller and smaller and smaller than 50%. And why does that actually happen? Well, um, let's look at this through the lens of a random experiment, right? Because that's actually what happens here. So for our first experiment, for a first cross validation with some arbitrary configuration lambda, like I said, the estimated test error will be close um, to 50%. And if you look at this um, from a theoretical perspective, this error will actually be distributed like a um, specific uh, binomial distribution. And because um, our test set will not be super small, it will not only contain a few elements, it might contain a few hundred elements, this binomial distribution can actually be reasonably well approximated with a normal distribution. Huh? And it will be a normal distribution which is quite uh, narrowly peaked around the 50%. So everything seems super good and okay, right? And now we do this a couple of times. We sample maybe 10, maybe uh, 100 or maybe 1000 configurations um, with our uh, random search algorithm. And because um, of the, I don't know, feature independent nature, of our classifier and the general correctness of cross validation, all of these sampled performance values, they will kind of fluctuate around um, this center value here of 50% error. So this looks also okay. So what is really going on in this uh, graph before? What is actually the problem? Um, the problem is that we are not computing the average over all of these experiments, we are computing the minimum. Yeah? We are minimizing uh, because optimization is search and we're searching for the best configuration with a minimal error. So after 10 experiments, um, we are returning the value of this guy here on the left-hand side. Yeah? So that's a minimum statistic, it's not an average. Um, and after 100 random search iterations, this error is already at 42%. After 1000 iterations, yeah? Just by pure chance, we have created a configuration um, which is still has no effect still. Yeah? But just by random chance, um, the cross validation error is now 36%. And because of this, yeah, this error will just by random chance um, over time go down and down and down and down and down and become more and more and more biased. And um, because Still, if you are running such a model with this configuration here on new untouched data, the error will still be 50%. Yeah? So our estimated uh, performance is completely off um, and misleading to us. And this, um, this problem will be more expressed the less data we actually have for testing, the less iterations, we, the less uh, cross validation iterations we perform, and the more tuning iterations we perform. And it's pretty hard to kind of get a theoretical um, expression for this time, for this type of bias and shift. Uh, so it's pretty hard to kind of re repair this um, during our uh, tuning process or after our tuning process. Um, 
but there's a simple countermeasure against this problem. So we just have to simulate what happens actually uh, in practice and in model application. Um, we have kind of um, seen the same principle before when we talked about the problems of um, training error estimation versus test error estimation. We just said, hey, let's just use, use an untouched test set that we have never touched during training, during the optimization in training and touch it only once for unbiased performance estimation after model building. And we do exactly the same thing here. So we just have to accept that all parts of model building, including model selection, including pre-processing, including hyperparameter tuning, including feature selection, should be embedded in the uh, model finding process on training data. Yeah? And as we have to cross-validate our normal model training procedure, we also have to cross-validate this model building procedure. And this, our final test set should only be touched once after we have built our model completely and made all decisions for our model only on the training data. And if we do this, we have no way of cheating. Uh, our test data set is only used once after our model is completely trained, after model is completely built on the training data, and after deciding hyperparameters, used features, and so on. And then through this principle, we will now automatically um, obtain unbiased performance estimates of the true performance um, on test data, as long as our um, test data is an IRD sample from the true data generating process. If not, uh, many or all bets are off uh, potentially anyway. Um, and this means that for steps that themselves require resampling during model building, for example, hyperparameter tuning, this results in a nested process it's also called nested resampling or nested cross-validation, where we have an inner loop for um, cross-validation uh, or resampling during tuning and an outer loop for evaluation on data not used for tuning to get honest estimates of the perf uh, expected performance on new data. What that exactly means we will see in the um, other parts of the lecture on nested resampling and uh, the train validation test principle.